Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we're a married couple in love that loves Marvel. We love the MCU. That's how we got our start, was doing uh, Marvel MCU ratings and rankings. It was the most scientific way to arbitrarily score a film. That's what, that's what we did. We had a score sheet and everything. We did. We've also done our top 100 favorite MCU characters. And a couple of those favorites were Wanda and Vision. Yeah, they were. So this is going to be our reaction for the first two episodes of WandaVision. So, okay, let's dive into the first episode. Um, what, are, what are your thoughts so far? To me, the first episode was charming. It had all the nostalgia of growing up watching Nick at Night as a kid with Isla Lucy <laughs> and Bewitched and I Dream of Jeannie. Um, it also had all the sentimental stuff because obviously we know where we left Wanda and Vision. Wanda's had a, a rather traumatic existence as we've known her. She's lost both her parents. She's lost her brother. Mm -hmm. She's lost the love of her life. She's had a pretty rough go of it. So seeing this kind of show, this tone, and to see her and Vision together, it's what we all want to have had happen. What I thought was a real standout was Vision. Um, I thought Paul Bettany um, was great because Vision is such a stoic character yeah. in the movies. This one, you kind of really get to see some charm um, with, with, with Vision. And I thought that was really cool. And I thought Paul Bettany did, you know, knocked it out of the park. Not that, you know... Wanda wasn't good and Elizabeth Olsen wasn't great. She was amazing as well. I would definitely agree. I think we've always seen Elizabeth Olsen shine in Wanda and Wanda's yeah. personality. Um, her romantic interest in Vision has kind of been, to me, a bit elusive. Not that he's not a great guy. Not that I don't like it, but I just don't necessarily understand it. I haven't seen enough of them together to know what brought this about. And now seeing this, I'm like, oh my God, they're so great together. <laughs> I can also see why they originally wanted Falcon and the Winter Soldier to be first and um, Black Widow as well. It's going to take some time to figure out what's going on in WandaVision, clearly. Um, so the one scene in this that was disturbing where uh, his boss is choking and all of a sudden the, the tone kind of shifts and the camera angles shift and it's, you know, it, it, was, it, it was creepy. It was su sufficiently creepy and you're like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> all of us know none of this is real. Vision yeah. is dead. None of this is actually happening. And yet, we're so willing to fall into it in the mm. same way that Wanda so desperately wants to fall into it that when you get this snippet of realization that, that this is not reality but rather a break with reality, it is really unsettling. They do a great job putting us in Wanda's shoes as we go through this, which I think will make it give us all of those wonderful feels and yet all of those terrifying feels at the same time. Yeah. Uh, moving on to episode two, I was wondering, okay, so they kind of ended episode one on a little, on that little kind of like creepy uh, note and there's that uh, guy in a van that's like watching them on a TV. And with a little black notebook that has a symbol on it. With a little black notebook that has a symbol on it. I didn't catch the symbol, but why don't you talk about the symbol? Well, I, I noticed it at first because with Marvel there's always there's usually always something going on. You, they don't just have symbols in there for no reason. Usually there's always something that connects to it. And I've never been knowledgeable enough in the comics to know what's going on. So I'm always looking for those little clues in the, in the movie to be like, oh, I, I need to make sure I understand what's happening and what's going on. And I don't want to be left out. So I noticed right away that there was a symbol there. And I didn't know what the symbol was. And I couldn't tell if it was because it was such a quick shot and like the dude's hand was in there that did I not see it fully? Or Am I not familiar with it? But the symbol then makes two appearances in the second episode. Mm -hmm. um, there is a toy helicopter. It's our first bit of color in this world that crashes into Wanda's front yard, like rose bush or whatever. Uh, that little chopper had the same symbol on it. And then flash forward to the end of the episode where there is a guy in a beekeeper suit that once again has the symbol. So. I don't know what the symbol is, but obviously it has something to do with Wanda's break in reality, and it's probably rooted in the real world that she's trying to escape. Each episode has one little commercial break that they have in it, and the second one, uh, they had Baron Strucker and Hydra uh, was in as part of the, the, the watch that they were that they were doing, so that, that was in there as well. It did start to bring in a little more of the dark elements. There was... Um, Help me Wanda instead of help me Rhonda mm -hmm. playing on the radio. Uh, so so we heard a little bit more of her reality trying to creep in, which I think made it 
a little more unsettling, a little darker, even though they did a great transition back to those lighthearted, funny moments. Um, I just think we had a little more of that seeping in, which did kind of take away some of the laughs in a good way, not that it made the show lose anything. Yeah, and then there's some uh, some intrigue as to who the voice was uh, coming through the radio that was saying, you know, who's doing this to you, Wanda? Wanda, tell us who's doing this to you. And to me, it kind of sounded a little bit like Clint, a little maybe it might've been Hawkeye. So, but overall, I think the impression so far is that I'm, I'm invested in this yes. and, I, and I'm hooked. And I'm very impressed with, uh, with you know, the production value and the storytelling and the creativeness and the innovativeness of WandaVision so far, and it is not disappointing me. Yeah, I, I mean, we've been anticipating this show for a while, yeah. uh, and I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit afraid for this show, because it is such, it's such a gamble um, making this show, because it's, it doesn't fit a traditional mold at all. Yeah. I'm glad Marvel trusted us as their audience and their fan base with it because I think this show is great. Yeah. I think if you're not a, a Marvel Cinematic Universe fan, it will be tough to follow. Um, which yeah. isn't to say it's that gonna, it won't still have charm. It's gonna be humor. tough for the, for, the, for the casual Marvel fan, I would say. Yeah. You know, you're not gonna get that instant gratification that you get from a lot of the, a lot of the Marvel movies and that, that instant escapism. And especially what you said about the, the end credits, that I thought was just that, that was amazing. Those are some amazing yeah. visuals, and it really I can see why they put it at the end versus in the beginning, because it's a completely different tone. And so you, it, the creepy stuff usually happens at the end. So to, like that kind of segue into the credits is okay. Whereas if you started with that and then you went into like the cheeky, like funny, you know, sitcom humor, it, the, there'd be a disconnect there. Yeah, and I just think for for me as the audience member, having this great walk down memory lane of Wanda and Vision and how great they are, and then ending on that super unsettling note, just kind of further enhances the idea of this isn't real, something's not right, something's off. Yeah. Um, which we know as the audience, but when you're in it, like I said, they do a really great job making us fall into it as Wanda, wanting to buy into it, wanting to feel it. So. And. I, you know, I just gotta say, you just gotta have to stick with it. For those that have maybe haven't gotten hooked right away, um, I think that the payoff is gonna be really good, but I think they are gonna take their time. I don't expect any big reveals to happen in next week's episode. I expect it to be kind of more the same, where there's just little things dropped here and there, and it probably won't be until the last two episodes where we really start to piece things together. It might not even be until the final one when we really finally know what's going on. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised at the end of this season if we don't know who's behind this or have a clear picture. Mm. I think we'll get a massive clue. Yeah. By the the final episode or second to final episode, but I I don't think they're going to let us sit pretty with this in the off season. You know, they want us coming back for that season, <laughs> so they're not they're not going to give us full satisfaction. Yeah. Well said. All right. So now that uh, let us know down in the comments below what you think so far of WandaVision. Um, which if it's everything you hoped for, if it was better than you expected. And, uh, you know, if you're, you're going to continue to stick with it, what you think so far of the MCU's branch into television. And mm -hmm. keep in mind that our reaction to WandaVision is definitely not definitive.